Experts on the auto industry say they expect super car buying incentives. You like this car? Uh. It's yours. Things are not looking so bright for the housing market. I'm sorry you took getting kicked out of my house the wrong way. When Friday arrives, just give me a nudge. It's Friday. I'm ready to party. Start the party. It gets crazy in here. Don't leave Friday unattended. Showtime. Hi, everybody, and welcome to NSS. This is the Reynolds Report. In a new behind-the-scenes Game of Thrones video, we get an inside look into the making of the blockbuster TV show, specifically the complex stunt work that brings the bloody battles to life. Stunt coordinator Rowley Iriam, who's also worked on sets of major action films like James Bond's Skyfall and The Bourne Ultimatum, shared his thoughts on some of the actors' own stunt abilities. His verdict on Kit Harington's Jon Snow pretty positive. Looks like Snow might know something after all. Irium explains, Kit's doing most of the stunts himself. He's doing all the fighting. He moves really well. He's great. James Corden talked about Sunday's Grammys. He's hosting the show. What do we have in store for Sunday night? We're not doing like a big sort of opening or anything. There's a, a very, very, very big performance at the start of the show. So we have a couple of things planned. A couple of things we're still waiting to hear on. If we can pull it off and, and then and then we'll see. I know Beyonce's on your bucket list. Mm. Is she going to be on the Grammy bucket list? Will she perform this year? Oh, she won't be performing this year. No, I don't. No, she performed last year. Do you still get nervous at this stuff? Nervous all the time. I'm never not nervous, so yes, I'll be terrified. ABC has picked up the pilot for the female-led The Greatest American Hero reboot. The half-hour comedy will feature Mira, a 30-year-old Indian-American woman from Cleveland who spends most of her time drinking tequila and singing in karaoke bars. Then some aliens give her a super suit to help her protect the world, despite her lack of qualifications. Hilarity ensues. Uh, no, it's not me. Thanks for calling. Hi, folks. Bill Strange, MD here, with a message for people who keep showing up at my office expecting to meet a superhero. Yes, I am Doctor Strange, but not that Doctor Strange. So if you can stop disrupting my work day to ask, where's your cape, or what's it like to levitate, or will you show me how to shoot energy bolts? I'd appreciate it. I have a busy schedule. Stopping every three minutes to respond to stuff like, you look fat for a superhero, or do all sorcerers have that much ear hair? Stresses me out. So to recap, yes, I'm Doctor Strange, but not THE Doctor Strange. And hearing comments like, do the other Avengers call you Grandpa? Or, are you crying? It's really starting to affect me. Okay, thanks. Gotta go. Somebody named Loki is in the waiting room. Hello, this is Doctor Strange. Uh, no, not that Doctor Strange. President Trump is in Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum. He's only there for one night, but that should be plenty of time for him to say something racist. Trump told the world that America is open for business. And who better to make that declaration than a man who's declared bankruptcy six different times? Donald Trump shocked people by saying that he was looking forward to being interviewed by special counselor Robert Mueller. I don't think he fully understands the process, though. He suggested they do it at Mar-a-Lago between holes. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Saunders said yesterday that the White House wants to see the Russia investigation come to a complete and full conclusion. Oh, no, you don't, replied Robert Mueller. Marriott International is being sued for $300,000 after a valet at one of its Florida hotels mistakenly gave the keys to a Ferrari to the wrong guy. The man was trying to impress a woman he had just met. She believed that the Ferrari was his. She also thought that his name was Magnum. After a crockpot caused a fire on the latest episode of This Is Us, people have been afraid to use their crockpots. They're also afraid that they may actually have to start cooking again. North Korea has made a call for the complete unification of the two Koreas. I guess they figured that if Roseanne can come back to television, pretty much anything is possible. A West Virginia bank robber was arrested after he was identified by the cab driver who drove him to and from the bank. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a exactly why you should always properly tip. 
New study shows that just one cigarette a day is enough to give you heart disease or a stroke. It figures there's finally a consumer item that exceeds expectations and it has to be bad for you. The latest poll shows that the best state for driving is Texas, while the worst state for driving is Hawaii. People get tired of being late for work due to yet another volcano detour. Time for Nobody Gives a Fuck. Murphy Brown is coming back. It's all part of network television's attempt to grab the all-important 18 to 24 demographic. Hey, TV, nobody gives a f- Oprah has cleared up all the rumors and she said that she's not running for president. Please tell me that she just didn't leave the door wide open for Rachel Ray. Hey, cooking shows, nobody gives a f- And Jay Leno's garage featured a $2.9 million 2017 Bugatti that goes 261 miles per hour. You know, for those hectic days when going any less than a third of the speed of sound is just not enough for you. Hey, fast cars, nobody gives a f***. Thanks, everybody. We have a new episode of The Reynolds Report for you every weekday. Frank D'Angelo and his kick-ass 15-piece band in concert at the Lincoln Alexander Theater in Hamilton, Saturday, February 24th. For ticket information, please go to frankdangelo.ca.